Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is part two of Homelessness Surges as Funding Falters from MSNBC on the 30th of January today. Still, the casualties are mounting, among them Atlanta nonprofit Nicholas House, could have had a time bank, which closed the shelter for families in mid-January so it could safely keep other housing programs open. Nearly all corporate donors gave to the organization at lower levels this year, said Dennis Bauman, executive director of the 26-year-old agency. The final straw came when a corporate donation ended and was not renewed. It was directly because of the economy. The businesses suffered in this economy and so can't provide the funding, which was well over 100000 a year, says Bauman. The organization is scrambling to find other options. Are they going to consider community currencies? Probably not. For the 12 families, 45 people in all who live there, by squeezing them into other parts of its own programs or opening up with other op openings with other nonprofits. Arguably, no single event in the economic crisis has caused a greater ripple of concern among advocates for the homeless than the government taking over mortgage giants Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae in September. In 2007 alone, charitable giving through the Freddie Mac Foundation and Fannie Mae Philanthropic Division topped $47 million. Peanut! The bulk of which goes to programs that shelter and feed homeless Americans and establish affordable houses. Remember, one B-2 war bomber cost $2,000 million. So when they talk about $47 million, peanut, what is it, one-thirtieth, one-fortieth of a B-2 bomber. In Washington, D.C., where Fannie and Freddie have been the largest corporate donors, dozens of organizations were up in the air as government auditors reviewed the corporation's reg records, including their charity operations. Linda Dunphy, executive director of Doorways for Women and Families, a shelter program that's been receiving funding from Freddie Mac since 1996, says the takeover of the mortgage company threw a promised $300,000 grant into limbo. Meantime, Doorways watched other substantial corporate donations drain away, including some 50000 that have been coming through an annual walkathon from financial companies. Companies Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch. Fortunately, when the review of Fannie Mae and Freddie's charitable operations ended in late December, the Freddie Mac grant came through for doorways, averting the need to shut down a family shelter for the next six months, at least. But then we face a whole new fiscal year and our concerns about what's going to happen at Freddie Mac Foundation and whether they can continue to keep giving at that level they've been giving, says Dunphy. The alternative house for homeless mothers in Northern Virginia was not so lucky. Matt Freddie Mac had been given thirty-five thousand to sixty a year to this nonprofit. The Freddie Mac money went was spent on providing development assistance for the babies who are often behind because of their chaotic beginnings. Like, well, you ever heard of the Nones in El Paso, Texas, who set up a time bank, brought child mortality down? Last week, Judith Dittman, who runs the program, got word that the funding was cut. Go see my video on the El Paso nuns. States awash in red ink up to now. Another major source of funding for nonprofits providing homeless services came from state budgets. But entering 2009, at least 45 states face budget deficits, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, which estimates combined state budget gaps for the remainder of this fiscal year and the state years at more than $350 billion, will fill the gap with community currency, morons. The trend bodes very badly for programs that benefit the poor and the homeless, unless they fill the gap with community currency. The leading example of state budget problems in California, which has eliminated funding for emergency housing assistance this year, as it struggles to pair its $40 billion deficit. In Ventura County, just north of Los Angeles, the cut of about 60000 delivered an immediate blow to three homeless operations. The largest, a winter shelter run by St. Vincent de Paul that provides bed for 100 people, was forced to cut 30 nights from its schedule. A shower every second night. Because they operate on a shoestring, it's a significant hit to them, says Karen Shulkin, program coordinator for homeless services in the county. And I guess she never searched the internet for lets or time banks either. The winter shelter at the National Guard Armory can only stay open for a number of days they have funding for. Local government funding often provides seed money for nonprofits who leverage it to drum up foundation money and other found donations. So according to Bean of the Nonprofit Roundtable of Greater Washington, the local deficit, about $1.5 in the case of D.C. and surrounding areas, yeah, three-quarters of a war plane, could present an even bigger problem than the uncertainty over the future of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac Foundation. This will put a huge strain on the ability to invest in the safety net. The challenge of a lot of nonprofits is that local government support will be down, foundations will be down, says Bean. The question is what happens with individual donations? 
To be sure, out of the crisis come tales of inspired giving as communities scramble to raise new funds. The town of Danville in southern Virginia rallied to reopen a shelter that closed at the end of December after 15 years in operation. A drive prompted a $20,000 anonymous gift, which was more than matched by dozens of other local contributions. By January the 22nd, the money and a new director were in place to reopen the 20-bed shelter, offering some reprieve, at least, in a town with an estimated 150 homeless. 20. The people of Danville, imagine they all got an interest-free credit card and they could go rent an apartment and then pay it back with work. Gee, too hard to contemplate, I know. Homeless people are useless. They just got to give, 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 can't give back, they say. So, the people of Danville opened up their hearts and pocketbooks with 23,000 in matching funds, says Pastor Donnie Anderson of the Riverbrook Church of God, who spearheaded the fundraising. We are so grateful the shelter is open as House of Hope and is ready for any who may need warm place to stay and hot meals to eat. And yet, Isaiah 55 said, you are hungry, come, buy and eat. So, giving it away isn't the answer. Giving them the credit to buy, that's the answer. That they can pay it back. On Capitol Hill, as part of the $819 billion economic stimulus package, Congress included a boost in funding for emergency shelters. The $1.5 billion provision doubles. Oh, three billion for homeless and eight hundred and sixteen billion for fat bank losses. Yeah, the anyway doubles the annual federal funding for alleviating homelessness. In addition, the bill includes two hundred million, a tenth of a war plane, to help people who are behind on mortgage or rent payments. Hey, maybe they ought to just sell one or two war planes. Oh, who's got money? The bill now being debated in Senate is a good step forward, says Maria Forscarini, Executive Director of the National Law Center on Poverty and Homelessness. <laughs> Thinks it's good. But the organization is also calling for the federal government to renew its commitment to affordable housing, which she says ended with the large cuts for low-income housing in the 1980s. Well, I'm sure they are committed to affordable housing. They just haven't got any money right now. The NLCPH calls for Congress to make a large infusion of funding to the National Housing Trust Fund tasked with building affordable housing or have the Treasury issue new Treasury chips in exchange for new housing being built so that every new Treasury note is backed up by a piece of new house. And once you're running your housing money like poker chips, well, then everybody knows that these Treasury dollars are backed up by houses they can pay their rent with and they're going to take it like real money and the government doesn't pay interest. The growing gap between wages and housing costs has long been hard for low-income people, says Forskadini. We are now seeing people who are middle-income who are being squeezed. Well, that's what was great about the ISCA money video in Argentina. Those people in the streets when the banking system crashed, they were in suits and real class poor people, not, you know, the usual ones. Hopes fade for city team shelter. While the debate continues, local churches and homeless advocates are trying to revive the city team shelter, though hope for a breakthrough is dwindling. Glenn Dennis was lucky. His former team, city team friends dusted him off after his relapse and helped him get into rehab program at the Brave of My Life Ministry in downtown Seattle. He's starting over again. Charles Capizano, who lives with three other graduates in the rehab program in a house secured for them by Bread of Life, is cautiously planning his future, but worries about the many people who scattered when the shelter closed. Once you lose everything, it's hard to get back to the surface again, he says. You get a good lead on a job and you think, how am I going to get there? How can I dress for work? Not having a place to cycle out of that is really tough. MSNBC. Well, some people might think I'm being pretty rough on all these good-hearted anti-poverty activists out there hand, handing out the band-aids to all the people in the streets. And I am. I mean, yeah, charity's nice, and working in charity's nice, but didn't you look for the solution to the problem? Didn't you try and figure it out? Did you, I mean, time dollars, it's made the news so many times. Community currencies, they've made the news so many times. You organizers, how can you sit there and keep hearing about alternate currencies and sit there and say, we can't do anything unless we get some federal stuff? Well, you know, federal stuff's important, but there are ways to fill the gap, fill the shortage. And who knows, at some point, your lifeboat could become big enough to be an independent ship. So, the information is out there, and it's just like all these prisoners who are too disappointed and have so little hope that they didn't even check to find out that their cell was unlocked. 
here we are sitting in a situation of the conquering army with the captured railroad, sitting there saying, geez, it's so hard walking everywhere, we can't use the trains because we can't find any tickets. And that's the stupid predicament mankind finds itself in. Not enough money tickets and we're going to shut down all the machines? Well, the answer's out there. And if the activists won't do it, well, maybe some of the victims will catch this and then contact the activists and say, hey, what about setting this up a time bank so that the people who give money to fund this thing, we can send out work crews and fix stuff for them and pay them back somehow with time. So time banks have worked all over the states, all over the world. They have no excuse. What is their excuse for not knowing, for not searching, for not finding the answer that's been out there for 20 years?